Hello, this is Christian Okoye, former Kansas City Chiefs. You are listening to Grilling Truth. Welcome to week six of the Grueling Truths Weekly Pick'em Show. I'm your host, Mike Goodpasser. Right now, I want to welcome in my co-host. First up, Oz Davis. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Happy to be part of the crowd. We got a crowd here. All right. Yeah, we do have a crowd here. Everybody's on board this week. Um, also, <laughs> Brian Schmidt. Hey, everybody. Good to be here. And now the people are what people would listen in for. We got former four-time Grey Cup winning running back Robert Drummond. How's it going? Good to be back. Hey. And CFL Hall of Fame quarterback, Dieter Brock. Good to be back with you, Mike. All right. We had a couple really good games to start our this last week, but we'll go ahead and we'll start off with Winnipeg. Um, Dieter, <laughs> what, was your thoughts on, what were your thoughts on the Winnipeg uh, Blue Bombers? Matt Nichols finally played, which a lot of people have been yelling for. Um, I, I knew you were coming thoughts? to me first. <laughs> well, I always am uh, until Winnipeg starts to win, and then we'll put you to yeah. the back. Oh, that's fine. I, I, I like that, but uh, – yeah, I think uh, all the fans are wanting to see what Nichols can do, and uh, they'll get their opportunity, I guess, you know, this coming Thursday night. Um, I'm not I'm not sold on, on Matt Nichols. Uh, I still think Drew Willie is the guy. I think he had more problems than just quarterback, though. Yeah, I think the biggest problem with Winnipeg is in their front office. Mm-hmm. You, you may be I right. Agree. I think it starts I can, in the I completely top. agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Robert, you want to talk about that a little bit? I, I mean, I, I, as a former player, you know, like Dieter, I mean, I, you can tell when there's more problems, you know, emanating from a team than just the team itself. It just seems like those guys are playing with the, some, like something heavy on their mind, like something's going on. What we used to call as players upstairs, which is management. And it's just something going on with Winnipeg. They, you know, they, they better figure it out. They better figure it out quickly because, it's, I mean, it's telling. Yeah, All eventually, right, so, you know, I'm sorry, yeah. Mike. I, I just saying yeah. eventually. I mean, you know, you you, you got to start winning at some point. And right now, uh, since Michael Shea's been there, I'm not getting. I'm not, you know, trying to get down on on him. But they're, they're not winning, and he's not winning, and they don't seem to be turning it around at all. Yeah, but I think Brian, I'll direct this question to you. I mean, you've got a coach there in O'Shea, but if the front office doesn't have their stuff together, scouting department, and everything else, is it really fair to blame it all on the head coach? No, you can't. Uh, unfortunately, the head coach is usually the one that gets the uh, bullseye put on him in this situation. But uh, this is a problem that's deeper than the head coach. And until uh, those problems get rectified, I mean, you know, we're going to continue continue to see what we're seeing right now. Uh, and and you know, every. every Winning programs, winning programs, uh, winning organizations. It, it starts from the top and it works its way down. And you can't have a bad front office and expect to win. And right now, uh, it's a front office that's struggling. All right, and Oz, your take on the Calgary Stampeders? I think they had the first game of the season against BC, which they let get away from them. But mm-hmm. I mean, with Bo Levi Mitchell threw three touchdown passes, the defense you know, held off a late rally by Nichols. Um, where do you think Calgary stands right now? Where do I think Calgary stands? I think Calgary is one of only two complete teams right now. I think what you're seeing this year is a lot of teams chucking the ball. Uh, I heard an interesting theory the other day that says one of the reasons why CFL quarterbacks are so pass-happy this season is because of the defensive pass interference call. Hey, you might as well go downfield. You might get the call to go the right way, right? Uh, but I think that – even though we have six teams maybe that can run up the scoreboard, I really think we only have two teams that can play top flight defense right now. And I think one of them is Calgary. I think we can throw out that first game, Uh, that first game, you know, Robert talked about this after week one, you know, they're still in spring training. Okay. They look a little slow. They look a little sluggish. They still came within two points of beating what is now apparently the top team in the league. So I love the Sam Peters right now. I think, you know, like I say, these are, this is one of the top two teams. All right, so that brings us to one of the great games this week that was played. I think it was on Friday night. Mm. Saskatchewan 30, Ottawa 29. Great game. Trevor Harris gets hurt, I think, on the second possession. Brock Jensen came in, really played well. Uh, Mitchell Gale really stepped up for Saskatchewan, 21 for 36, 354 yards, one touchdown, and more importantly, as a backup quarterback, he did not turn the ball over. Um, Brian, do you think Ottawa's all right with Brock Jensen, or do you think maybe when they get their third quarterback here, it's time to be a little bit more worried? Well, I, I thought he played really well. 
you know, I was real impressed with, with what I saw. I, you know, uh, as, as in this situation, I think, I mean, we got to see what happens at, at the next, you know, next game. But I mean, I, I'll tell you, I was impressed with him. And I, I think that, you know, when you look at a team that you can go from losing your, your first guy, losing your, you know, then you lose your second guy and your third guy and, and you don't miss a beat. Uh, that's some depth at the quarterback position that there's a lot of teams in this league would love to have. So, uh, yeah, and I think, and I think, I think what we okay. were talking about, what we were talking about before, Brian, with the front office, uh, Robert, maybe you want to address this. I think Ottawa's front office has been all over everything this year, and I think that's what's made made them one of the better teams in this league. I think Ottawa is a very, very well, well, very well coached team from top to bottom. I mean, you can, it, it, it goes without saying. Even when we, were, we were in uh, when I was in Toronto. We were a very, very well coached team from top to bottom. Granted, we had some of the top tier players, but you know, you can just see it. You can just see it in the way they carry themselves, the way they go out there, and it, it, it's the attitude of you expect to win every game. Granted, they came up so short this game, but you always expect to win every game. And as of right now, they're one of my top, easily top two teams in the CFL going forward. A lot will be found out in the next two to three weeks of the season. I promise you that. Remember I told you it's not really how you start, but it's at that midway point, teams are gonna, the, the mm-hmm. good teams are going to really start to separate themselves from the, you know, from the average to the, to the, to the bottom-tier teams, and this is where you make your push. Yeah, yeah this is Peter, the time, this is the time of the year. Saskatchewan, Mitchell Gale really played well, I think, coming in and relief for Darian Durant. Um, what do you think about Mitchell Gale, and what do you think about Saskatchewan from here on out? Well, I, I, honestly, I hadn't seen uh, Mitchell Gill or uh, Brock Jensen play. I, I hadn't had the opportunity to, to see them in action, but uh, I know. Hey, Dieter, you're he's... supposed to act like you watch the games, even if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, listen, I think um, I think uh, Saskatchewan's improving, but um, uh, you know, defensively, they they still are, are have been struggling. But I think they're going to get get better, and. Uh, you know, I think they're well coached. They got a good, they got an uh, outstanding coach. So I think that's going to be a, you know, the difference maker for them and to help them get back into it a little bit. Yeah, we talk a little bit about that, Oz. I know a lot of people don't like Chris Jones, but I don't think you're going to find a better young coach in the CFL. No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. If you go back and just go back and look at the record, look at every single position this guy has taken, whether it's a coordinator, whether it's an assistant coach, whatever, it doesn't matter. Literally. Every place he goes, his teams improve year on year. After seeing this game, there's no way I can't believe that the Riders are not going to improve from their ridiculous 3-15 and 15 last season. I think that's unquestionable. And I would also say, given the fact that the back eight on this team is eh, pretty weak still, next year we're going to see more improvement too. It doesn't matter what these guys come up with this year. Next year they're going to be even better. Um, great win for Saskatchewan, too, might I say. This yes, I was a game that they would have pissed away in the third quarter last year, and they stuck with it, and they came through in the end with their second-string quarterback. Excellent game. Excellent excellent win for the Rough Riders, and they get Montreal next week. So this <laughs> well, team is definitely always, looking up. <laughs> yeah, that's always good. It's like being in the NFL yep. and getting to play the Cleveland Browns the next week. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, so we had also, I think, the biggest game of the week. The Hamilton Tiger Cats come from 31-6 down, 37-31 wow. wins, scored 17 points in the fourth quarter. Jeremiah Masoli completes a CFL record, 23 straight passes. Um, Oz, what was your take on this game? Oh, God. Well, I'm glad you asked me first because now I can turn the question back on you guys, and maybe you can tell me exactly what was going on on the sidelines, on the Edmonton sidelines, when Calaris was completing pass after pass and they were sticking in the zone on defense and they were applying zero pressure. Can anybody explain this to me? I've been talking to people about this all week. Nobody can explain it. You guys are all coaches. Can you explain it to me? Everything got complacent. Everything got complacent. I mean, and and you always say, and and, and, and you're going to test to this. It always plays when you play in a test to this. When you, when you get up on a team, you know, you keep your foot on the brake. Or see, you keep your foot on the gas pedal. You don't let off. You know, mm-hmm. I, I remember I remember one time in a game, we, we were up in Winnipeg, and we were, I think, with Doug Flea, we were up by about, by about 50, 60 points. And Doug's like, let's keep scoring points because you never know what can happen. You know what? They got complacent. 
and Hamilton came back and won the game, you know, and they're kicking themselves in the foot right now. I mean, I've been in a locker room before. That's the worst feeling in the world to know you had a mm-hmm. team beat like that and just completely have a turnaround. The only thing you can see mm-hmm. yourself is you got complacent you had the game won. You play, at that point, you're playing, you know, not to lose instead of playing to win, and you can't win games like that. Yeah, and I think the big question, Brian, we'll go to you on this. Edmonton, I think people thought was going to be either the best or one of the top two teams in the CFL coming into this year. They haven't really played a complete game yet. I'm sitting there watching the game. I watched the first half, and I think, well, this is the team we all expected to see. Then the bottom drops out in the second half. Um, The offensive line play was Mm. spotty at best. I mean, is Edmonton just a team that we expected too much from? Well, I think it's a little bit too early to – to go that route yet, but I'll tell you that what a difference two halves. Uh, yeah, just that first half, just you know, I at literally at one point, I mean, I, I literally I, I turned it off. Uh, you know, I, uh-huh. and then all of a sudden, I just happened to see and I, and I see that you know that you know Hamilton's coming back. I turned it back on, and so I actually I, I went back and watched the second half, or, and, and I just. I if you it would look like you know Edmonton in the first half and you know Montreal came came in in, in their uniforms in the second half it, it was just <laughs> completely different uh, you know I don't know that it's time to to say we're expecting too much but uh, they've got to put a complete game together uh, this, this as a staff as an organization players uh, you're not going to defend your Grey Cup if you're going to play like this. And they've got mm-hmm. to figure out, uh, you know, where they want to be because uh, this isn't going to get it done. And that second half was absolutely horrible for them. So, you know, yeah, they're, they're going to have to definitely make some changes. Yeah, and if you think about this, Dieter, I mean, right now they're missing Zach Kolaris. Everybody's, well, when Kolaris gets back, they're really going to be ready to go. As of right now, they're three and two with Masoli. I mean, they've got to be really happy to place that they find themselves in the standings with Kolaris close to coming back. Oh, there's no doubt about it. You know, and I'm, you know, I'm surprised uh, because I said last week, you know, Masoli at times plays great, and then there's times he's going to lose the lose the game. But this this last game, he was outstanding. Now a lot has to do with, like I think Robert said, that the defense of Edmonton is just like they. You know, they thought they had the game in the bag. Maybe the whole team thought that way, and the, and the game just flipped on them. And uh, you you can't – in the CFL, you can't do that because it's so easy for teams to get right back into it. Yep. And it, it can go – it can just – No lead on you, and, and you can't get your momentum back once you lose it. Yeah, and us. I mean, what it looked like to me in the fourth quarter of that game, it looked like Hamilton was playing seven on seven. I guess Edmonton, mm-hmm. there was no pass rush. Masoli could stand by and just throw the ball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we talked about this, how, and, and Robert brought this up, and I'm glad he did, about how now teams are going to be what we thought they were at the beginning of the year. And the truth is, what we were talking about in the off season was about how Chris Jones took his staff away from that team. We were talking about how Edmonton had been picked apart by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the NFL in terms of their roster. And now we're seeing the effects of it. Now we're seeing that that defense is not complete, right? Now we're seeing that that offensive line can get complacent. You know, you lose your key players like this, this is going to happen. I'm kind of surprised it took this long. But looking back on the schedule, I'm not that surprised. I mean, the competition hasn't been awesome against these guys. So, but I think we're seeing what we expected in week zero or week one from Edmonton. The holes are evident now. And what's, I mean, I don't know. I, again, I can ask you guys, is this going to be demoralizing in that locker room for Edmonton, losing this game in this way? One of two uh, I don't think so. I think they'll come back. I really do. I think they're too good on mm-hmm. offense, and I think they got some good players on defense. I just think it was one of those games where they just uh, they just eased it up, and and you know it allowed uh, uh, Hamilton to to get back into the thing and get the thing rolling, and then and it was just hard to to get back uh, and get the momentum back. Yeah, and I'll do this, uh, Robert. I mean, my question here would be this. Is this something that since it happened so early in the season could actually be a building point for this team? Uh, one of two things are going to happen. You know what? Uh, because you look at the first – it was a tale, tale of two teams. 
you know, the first half to the Edmonton team we expect, you know, moved the ball up and down the field, scored points, got on top of the team. They were supposed to be more dominant then. Everything was going great. Half comes out, and, oh, my God, everyone's standing around and waiting for someone else to make a play. That can be, mm. you know, a catastrophic, you know, mindset for any team. If you sit around and wait for other guys to make plays instead of you making the plays. If they go out there and they approach the game, you know, in the next week's game like, like they're supposed to, and they go out there and they attack, 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 they'll be fine. If they sit there and start waiting for guys to make plays, they could go on a, you know, two, three, four, five-game slump. As I said before, the next two to three games will tell an important tale of how the season will play out. All right, so we go to the last game of the week, which is always my favorite because I can bring up the Montreal Alouettes, <laughs> who are Oz's favorite team. They actually had the lead for a while this week, though, Oz. Um, Toronto nah. beats them 30-17. to Ricky Ray throws for 235 yards, three touchdowns before leaving the game in the fourth quarter with a leg injury. What happened, Oz? 325 yards, I should correct you, not 235. <laughs> Don't ever correct me again because I'm the host of this show, and if it's 235, it's 235, all right? Oh, go ahead and okay. talk about your Alouettes who suck. So it feels like 235. I'll tell you what, it felt like about 445 uh, as the Alouettes uh, fan. But look, I never believed it. Yeah, the Alouettes got out to an early one-touchdown lead. Nice pitch, nice 45-yarder to uh, Deron Carter. Okay, great. But the truth is um, it soon became one of those games where you never believed that they were going to pull this out. Um, you know, two long passes, two long touchdown passes to Deron Carter is not going to cut it. It's, it's just not enough. And, you know, the thing is, is like Toronto in the, fourth, in the third and fourth quarter, they started to try and give the game away. You know, there was, uh, there was an easy fumble by Anthony Coombs right after Montreal had scored their second touchdown, giving them the ball back in their own territory. You know, perfect setup. What happened? Nothing. Um, we've got a place kicker now who goes 0 for 3 on field goals. I mean, <laughs> you know, not positive, not positive. There's just not – I mean, call it confirmation bias, but there's just not a lot here going forward in Montreal. There just isn't. All right, so, Brian, Toronto, another team that loses their starting quarterback. I think I heard Ricky Ray's out, what is it, Oz, three to six weeks? Yeah, yeah. Well, are they good right. enough to overcome this? This comes back to what we talked about back uh, early on uh, with Toronto. Without Ricky Ray, I'm, I'm not convinced that they are good enough uh, to win. Uh, I, I think, you know, the quicker they get him back, the better it's going to be for them. Because right now, honestly, uh, I don't believe that their backup quarterbacks are good. Now, you know, it's not like last year when they had – you know, Trevor, Trevor Harris. Harris. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it, I I really think this hurts them. Uh, the quicker they get Ray back, the better because uh, you know, without a good backup quarterback in this league, uh, you're yeah. sunk. And you know, I mean, again, the difference between teams. You know, Ottawa, you know, right now is showing to, to possibly have three backup. You know, you have three quality quarterbacks. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Toronto is in a situation. I, I'm not sure that. You know, I'm not sure they have that quality back up, and then I think it's going to hurt them. Yeah, and Robert, is Montreal season pretty much done, or do you see something they can do to save this with the talent that they have assembled right now? <laughs> you know what? They're in a lot of trouble. They're really struggling right now. I mean, from the simple fact that they don't – as I said, football, football is a game – it's a mental game as much as it is a physical game, you know, an athletic game. I mean, like, like, let's say besides Montreal, let's look at Toronto for the standpoint. Okay, you look at Ricky Ray. Ricky Ray going down, but Toronto. I mean, Ricky Ray is a is a senior leader of that team. I think they're going to struggle for the simple simple fact that now you lose that, that you lose that leadership, you lose that veteran quality that you have in the player. They don't have a player like when supposing when I played, we had someone like a Duck Tootie go down. We had someone like a Pinball Pinball Clemens who could step in and be and, and motivate the guys to go out there and, and play at the next level. There's no one up there to motivate them to play at that next level. Montreal is the same way, you know. It's just it's, it's a simple fact of them not being in a position to be able to put themselves at that next tier. It's like I always said, I mean, I always, when, I, when I played, I always counted the games. I wouldn't worry about the first half of the season. Yes, you wanted to win, but the middle of the season is where you set yourself up because that's where you're going to find out injuries and all because the injuries are going to happen. It's a part of the game. You've got to fight through injuries. 
I've been injured myself before, but you've got to find a way to have guys step in there and, and produce in order to put you in a position to be successful later on in the season. And right now, there's, yeah. there's no way I think Montreal's going to be able to do that. And I'll tell you, Dieter, have you ever seen more injuries to starting quarterbacks in the first third of the season than you've seen this year? Well, this seems to be happening over the last two or three years in, in the CFL, and it's mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't understand, you know, why why this has happened, but it, it's, it's just something that's been happening. And uh, I think, you know, with Toronto having, losing Ricky Ray, I think that is a big, big blow to them because I think yeah. – I, I like their defense. I like what Stuber does on defense. You know the defense coordinator, and and uh, but they've lost the leader there on on offense, and I think that's that's going to be hard to, for them to overcome uh, in some of these games they're going to be playing. That's hard. That's all right. Hard. So last week everybody was two and two because we all picked the same games and we were wrong twice. We'll go ahead and start off this week, and since the first game of the week is Winnipeg, that means Dieter Winnipeg okay. at Edmonton. Yeah, um, you know, Matt Nichols is going to get a, an opportunity to see what he can do with Winnipeg. Uh, but going into Edmonton, and I know, you know, Edmonton had that uh, the loss, the tough loss last week after they had the big lead. I think they'll they'll come, they'll bounce back. I hate to do this to Winnipeg, but I, I like, uh, you know, what what Mike Riley does with the, at the quarterback position for Edmonton. I think uh, his, his toughness and leadership – is going to bring Edmonton back, even though the you know Edmonton's defense has been struggling. I think um, I don't know if Winnipeg has the the uh, the, uh, the speed to, to make some big plays in their receiving core. I think they they got one big time receiver, I guess, and and uh, what is it, Adams? But other than that, I don't know if they got anybody that uh, can really stretch the field, and or oh, they haven't even been trying to do that. So. Uh, Looking at this game, Winnipeg, and Winnipeg's defense is, is last in the league, I think, in total total defense. Um, so I got they're I second gotta, to last in yards surrendered. They okay, know that. and after the and after I think the they're um, yeah, and and Winnipeg's offense. I mean, even with Drew Willie, you know, they've been playing. I guess this is the one they're gonna make the change. They're last in the league in yards per play, and. Uh, Mm-hmm. And Edmonton, I think, is second. So, I, you know, everything's pulling in, in this in this game, looking like, you know, Edmonton to me. So I'm I'll have to pick the, the Eskimos in this one. All right, Robert. I just think Winnipeg has way too many imper- in, internal problems, and it's trickling down, you know, from from the head office on straight down, you know, to the coaches, to the players, and it's just. I mean, I, I think it's going to be a run now for home teams now dominating and winning games, you know, winning games off right, where the home field advantage is going to come back into play. And I just think with, it, with all, all the problems um, Winnipeg's having right now and Edmonton being a better team, I, mean, I feel, as you said, I feel Edmonton's one of the you know, top two teams in, in the top two or three teams in the league. You know, I just think they, they, they win this game and they win it easily. Yeah, I don't see Winnipeg being able to score enough points to beat them. I'm going to take Edmonton also. Mm-hmm. Um, Oz? Yeah, I, that's my assessment. However, I will say this. Um, this could be Winnipeg's most uh, best well-played game of the season, uh, I think, because here's the situation. Edmonton defense is pretty poor, and they are allowing a lot of yards per game. But the front four is pretty decent. It's the back grouping that we worry about. And the thing is that Nichols can throw the long ball a lot better than Drew Willie. Um, you said before, uh, somebody said, maybe Dieter said, um, not too many like long ball threats. But I'll tell you what. Um, Nichols in one quarter proved that he knows how to use Jamal Westerman a lot better than Drew Willie ever did. So I'll tell you what, if you're playing fantasy, pick up Westerman this week because he's going to get a lot of targets. <laughs> I will say right. that. As, as far as the actual game result, oh. Eskimo. Hold on. Go ahead, Oz. That's it. Eskimo. <laughs> 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 All right, Brian. Uh, uh. Well, I, you know, I've got to, I've got to go with Edmonton on this one. I, I, at home, uh, you guys, they, they are going to want to get that sour taste out of their mouth from the Hamilton game, and and you know, outside of Montreal, probably what better team to do it is against Winnipeg. So, yeah, I, I think Edmonton is going to win. I, I don't know that it's going to be close. 
All right, that brings us to the next, next game, which is Saskatchewan at Montreal. So, Oz, since you're an <laughs> Alouettes fan, we'll let you pick it first. All right, let's 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 make it really simple. We don't even need to talk about these two teams. When is this game? Thursday night? <laughs> Friday night. Um, Friday, Friday night. night. Friday night? Okay, so the Alouettes get a three-day break? No, nah, Riders. Riders are looking up. Alouettes are spinning the wheels. Riders. All right, Robert. And it's not even close. I, I have to load the writers off, so it's, it's, it's hard to pick a Montreal team. It, it really is. I mean, it's just two basement teams. You know? <laughs> I got to go with Saskatchewan. All right, Brian? Uh, I got to go with Saskatchewan. Uh, that they're just, uh, yeah, they, they got to go with Saskatchewan. I don't, I don't think there's any uh, chance Montreal has. I, I, just, I just see too many problems, too many uh, deficiencies, and, uh, yeah, I, I think I think I'll be honest. I think Saskatchewan is fixing to get on a little bit of a run here. So, gotta yeah, go with yeah I do too. I think they're just going to continue yeah. to get better with Chris Jones as the head coach. So mm-hmm. I think Saskatchewan wins this game. Also, Dieter. Yeah, I I uh, kind of agree with you guys. I, I think you know Montreal. I, I think they're pretty good on defense, but they're horrible on offense. And uh, I think Saskatchewan's getting getting better. I still, you know, there's still, a, you know, a chance. I, I you know, that um, Mitchell Gale. I know he's played pretty well, but I still have a little bit of concern about him. But uh, I think I've got to, I've got to go with Saskatchewan in this game, just because Montreal is so bad on offense. All right, so we'll start with Robert Toronto at Ottawa. I, you know. I, I, I want to stay true to my blue team, but I, I, Ottawa just seems to be playing with the exception of this, this hiccup is what I call it. I think Ottawa understands what I'm talking about as far as the push right now to prove who the dominant team is. And, it, and, and, and with Ricky Ray being out and, and a little bit veteran leadership being able to step in that position, as you said, they're not deep at the quarterback position. And it's just, I mean, you've you got to go to Ottawa. Yeah, I'll I tell do. you, if Ricky Ray was playing here, I yes. would be – possibly going with Toronto in the upset because it seems like Toronto's played better at home this year than they're better away this year than they have at home. They have at home. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, Uh, Dieter, Toronto at Ottawa. Yeah. I I, I kind of uh, agree with you. If Ricky Ray was playing, I I would think Toronto would have definitely have a chance in here, but with him not in there, I'm not sold on the backup quarterback uh, situation. Uh, And the, even the third team guy with Toronto was doing, doing well. So, and they're at home, so I've got to go with Ottawa on this one. All right, Oz? Yeah, the Argos, even even playing against Montreal, didn't help their defensive situation too much. I mean, this team has given up 590 total yards a game. Come on, come on. And they and they got to go in with their second-string quarterback? No way. Ottawa. Ottawa. All right, wins. Brian? Yeah, if Ricky Ray was playing, I, Toronto would be my pick. But without Ricky Ray, uh Ottawa is going to win this. Although I, I, you know, I'm I'm really interested to see how Jensen plays. Uh, I think this is going to be a a, a very uh, good game to find out, you know, uh, what kind of quarterback he is. But I, I've got a pretty good feeling he's going to play well. So Ottawa is my pick on this. One. All right. So that brings us to what I think is the game of the week, the game of the year so far. We get the yeah. BC Lions at Calgary. Um, we'll start off with Dieter. Okay, yeah, I um, I like both of these teams. I, I really like Calgary, though, uh, with uh, uh, Bo Levi Mitchell and what they do offensively. And, and I think they're pretty good on defense also. I think they're third in the league in, in, in defense. So, and, and BC is number one uh, in defense. But uh, I don't think they – I don't know if they played the Calgary team if, if Calgary's going to put out there this week. So, um, I like Calgary in this one. They're at home. And, uh, you know, I'm going with the, the quarterback, um, Levi Mitchell. All right, Robert. And having been a part of that Western Conference and, you know, having to go into Calgary as a BC line myself and play there, that's one of the toughest places. I mean, to, to walk in, you know, maybe, maybe playing in Edmonton and playing in Calgary for a I mean, year on, on a BC team is two of the toughest places I've ever had to play. And, uh, you know, in, in BC with their defense, uh, you know, being, you know, standing up and being stout and everything, number one defense in the league, but just playing in Calgary and the way they've been playing, you know, it's just, it's, it's hard to, uh, I mean, if the game was in BC, honestly, I'd take BC. You there, Robert? Yes, I'm here. Hello? Brian. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, 
Can you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you. you. We hear you. (laughs) All right, I can hear you, Dieter. Did you already pick this game? I think you did, didn't you? Yeah, I did. All right, you there, Robert? Yes, I'm here. I don't know what the heck happened there. <laughs> oh, God, the I, got I was all by myself. I was lonely. If it had been a tournament, I'd have been crying. But <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear right, Robert, you, Go ahead, Robert. What's your pick? Oh, my, my pick is Calgary. All righty. Um, let's see. Brian. Well, I'm going with the upset. I'm going to go with BC. I... Last week I had that funny feeling about Hamilton, and I, I went against it. And this week I got the funny feeling about BC, and I'm going to go with it, which means I'll be wrong. So if you're picking this one in Vegas, pick against me. But I'm going to go with BC. I just, I just have a feeling they're going to play well defensively, and yeah, they're going to score enough points. I, I think it's not going to be a, you know, it's going to be a low scoring game. But I just got a feeling that that BC is going to win this game. All right, the Wizard of Oz is up. What's up, Oz? Yeah, I'm going to lose this one, too. Uh, I'm going with BC. Truth be told, this thing is like a coin flip for me. Um, I mean, this is just – I mean, you've got basically the league's best offensive line in Calgary going up against maybe the best pass pass rush in the CFL in BC. These guys haven't faced something this tough this year. But there's matchups like this all the way across the board. I mean, this is number one versus number two, right? And, so, they, as far as and they don't like each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this is a coin flip. And since Joe Pritchard of the Rouge, White, and Blue took Calgary, I'm taking BC. All right, so this is my pick here. And I think now this means that BC is the favorite, not the underdog, because I think BC is the best team in the CFL right now. I think defensively they're the best team. The question to me is if Jonathan Jennings has stringed together two games in a yes. row and become a consistent starter. Because yeah. I, I think if he becomes consistent, they'll be fine. If not, you get him out, you put in Travis Lule, they'll be fine. But, I mean, Jennings played great last week in the second half. If he carries that over, I think B.C., I mean, it's the most complete team. I think they've got a top, mm-hmm. they're either the best or the second best defense. And let's face it, they shut down Calgary's offense. I mean, they gave Calgary, what, three possessions on block kicks, gave up nothing in the first half, still won the game. And I think BC's offense with Jonathan Jennings has improved big time since that first week. So I'm going to go with British Columbia. But, Oss, any final words? Um, One final word on this game. BC has one question mark, Jennings. Calgary has none. I think that's Mm -hmm. your best argument for Calgary, but that's boring. So, B.C., final thoughts besides that? Nope. Can't wait for that game. That's my final thought. All right, Brian, any final thoughts? Well, it's uh, – CFL is once again showing to be the place for the backup quarterback. So, it's going to be an interesting <laughs> week watching all these backup quarterbacks and, and, and seeing again who who has signed the right guy, who has not. So, it's going to be a, going to be an interesting week with uh, watching that. All right, Dieter? Yeah, you know the the CFL. It's it's a hard uh, hard lead to pick uh, who's going to win uh, week in and week out. And I think this you know this could be another one of those weeks. You never know. But I'm looking forward to uh, uh, seeing what Winnipeg can do this uh, this Thursday night against Edmonton. I just want to see how they play and uh, see if uh, if they got the heart into it. I think they will. I really think they'll uh, they'll play hard. Uh, so I'm very interested in seeing what's, what's going to happen there. All right, Robert. You know, even as a player, you know, I used to always tell myself, you know, it, it's, it's a long season. You know what, we're breaking training camp, the start of the season, you know, though it counts, it really it really sets you up at the end of the season. I mean, what's going to set you up in the middle of the season? You know what, games six, seven, eight, and nine, are what sets you up, you know, the continuity, can you play well as a, as a team together? The injuries are going to happen because the injury bug hits every single team. So at that point, if you can weather that load and put yourself in a position to be the dominant team that everybody fears or everybody looks at, the rest of the season will be, it won't be easy, but the rest of the season can be downhill for you, and this is at that point right now. So it'll be interesting to watch these next two to three to four games. So, all right, guys, remember we're here every week with the CFL pick and show. You guys good for next Monday night at 930? Yep. Yeah. Sure. I'm good. 
All right. So we will see you guys then. Make sure you check out The Grueling Truth at gruelingtruth.net. Check us out on iHeart, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Music, wherever you find podcasts, you'll find The Grueling Truth. So for Oz Davis, Brian Schmidt, Robert Drummond, Dieter Brock, I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.